In this video we're going to take a look at how we can run Python code within Node-RED. The reason for doing that is because I was looking at I2C sensors, which are relatively easy to wire up, I've covered this in a previous video by the way, and how I can use the low-code platform to visualize and start connecting my data to databases and to the cloud. I'm not a Python code expert, so what I've done is I've I've used the examples, and this is one you can see on the screen for one of the accelerometers. This is but pulling the data from, let's say, a subroutine of, uh, of sorts. Uh, so this is my tag accelerometer. This is, if we're simplifying it, this is my, my subroutine that's running. You can see here at the top, it's importing it. So that's running in the background, talking to my sensor, and bringing back free process values that are being printed and they're continuously being printed. So this is the code. So to run the code, it's Python free. This, this wiggly line is saying it's in the root directory, but you can see my, my root directory up here. If I hit enter, this will run the code. There's a slight delay and then it starts running the code. So every 0 0.1 seconds, it's updating the value. So that's continuously looping. It's, it, it's not ideal. It's not good code that you've got no break in there if you start having problems. So if I start having communication problems, I'm not too sure what the subroutine does and whether this just locks up. So this is what I would, the data I would like to bring back into Node-RED. Now the easiest way to do that is to use the execute command. So let's drag this in. So the main function of the execute command is, is to, to run Linux commands and you can see here my terminal is open and there is my Python code that I want to run. So I just cut and paste that command straight into my execute and then I want the output of this to append to my message payload. Uh, I can have a timeout here if I want, so I can put like four seconds um, and I can hide the console which just hides this, this thing at the bottom on the, on the runtime screen. I'm not really bothered about that. To run this I need an input right? so it doesn't run by itself which is where my problems start. My code has got a loop in it and this is looking for one pulse to start the node and then looking for a response. So I'm not confident that this is going to work. So I will inject this every second I'm not pushing any data into this block, and then I'm going to put a debug on the output. You can see here now I'm getting this killed, so it's struggling a little bit. So I'll show you quickly how we can fix this so it works with the execute command, and then I'll show you a better node that you can use that will run the code more smoothly. So I've opened up my terminal, um, and I can see my code here. Now the issue here is with this loop. So what I'm going to do is an experiment. There's nothing I can do in Node-RED, by the way, to, to make this work, not that I'm aware of. So I'm going to rem this loop out. have to delete the space. So all that's going to do is print the, the value every time I run this code. So if I do Control-X, I want to save it. Yes, and hit Enter. Now if I run this code that I've just generated, where before it was continuously looping it, I should just get one printed line. Now the problem you've got is you can see the delay at the at the front end. Um, I'm, I'm guessing this is when it's importing you know, all of the other subroutines and, and functionality. But um, once it gets running it's okay, but every time I run this now I've got this front end delay. But let's see how this works within Node-RED. Now, now you can see over on the right hand side here I have my three values and it's just bringing them back as a string so you can see and at the end of the string I've got the a return. I won't cover this on this video how we're going to split this string out into to proper numbers but you can see here now this is this is working okay um, but I really want to try and take advantage of the speed. I don't want to you know start having issues with communications and you can see here I'm getting some comms errors because I'm pulsing this too fast it's taking too long to to start up so 
I can't go one second. Let me deploy that. And then we'll clear all of that. So let's see if that gets rid of my red here. So I've had to slow it down. I hope this makes sense because I'm trying to restart the code before it's even finished the last command. So now it looks like the fastest I can go is I can update this every two seconds, which which will probably be enough. But these are vibration sensors, and within two seconds I might miss, you know, a, a quite a big pulse from a shock or something like that. So I I need to to move faster. So let's have a look at how we can use another function node rather than the execute node that allows me to, to, to use my code in this while loop. So I had a little look around to, to see what other Python functions there were. And I have to admit, I haven't tested all of these. I just landed on this one here. The, the uh, contrib Python shell seemed to, to work the best. Um, and there are other ones here uh, that um, I could test at a later date. This one was updated four months ago. Uh, but I've used this node, and I'm going to show you how to use it now, and it seems to work quite well. So it's the Python contrib um, Python shell yeah, that we're using. Here is the, the tech notes. If you, if you follow me on my blog pages, I'll put the link to this within the blog so you can you can uh, read this yourself there's an example flow here but of course the first thing you need to do is just a quick reminder is you need to go to your manage palette go to install if you just type in python you'll see here i've already got it installed but install the python powershell so let's close that um, here it is in my uh, filter on the left hand side it's under input that's, that's where it's put it but um, Let's pull that in. I don't necessarily need an input, but what I can do is I can start the code from here, like resets it. Let's have a look inside the node. Just before I do that, let's just cut and paste this. Let's have a look inside what we have to do. So we need to give it a you know a Python file. So there we go. It's exactly the same cut and paste we've using execute. Um, I'm not using a virtual environment. This is where it gets a little bit better. You can set a virtual environment. So we'll have it as continuous, standard input, and we'll give this a name. I don't need to trigger this all the time. We just need to trigger it once to start. So we'll use the same trigger here. We'll link it. We're not going to use any process values or push any process values through. And I'm just going to inject it once after startup. So that will be if I do a power recycle or if I deploy the code. I can override that manually with this, this input here. So we'll click done and we'll, we'll steal this debug because we're lazy. Now I've already changed the code back to have the while loop in. Right? So I'm going to deploy this. So I just noticed an error I made. I went into cut and paste mode. I don't need to, to give it the full um, uh, you know, command because I'm not running the execute. This is actually just looking for the Python file name. So you can you can see over here in the execute, just to show you what I've done, it, it's, it needs the command because this runs terminal commands. This is actually running the Python code. So I just need to give it the um, Python file name, which is here and it will execute that. And you can see over here on the right hand side, now look how fast this is This is coming through for me. And we can see um, that we are getting an update quicker than it looks like 100 milliseconds. So it's, it's, it's very quick, um, which is exactly what I want. Just to summarize, we've had a look at the execute command and uh, the, the limitations of that with regards to speed. And then we've looked at an alternative node, which is the um, Python PowerShell node, and how we can use that with the same code and push that through. So that is now linking to my I squared C sensors, and I'm happy that that data is coming in nice and fast for me. So the only limitation factor is the weight statements that I've got in my Python code. So I hope that was useful. Um, 
it now allows me to, to use the nice dashboard functionalities and stuff like that on Node-RED while having something more complicated running on Python code in the background. As, as always, don't forget to click on the notification bell because more videos like this coming out uh, soon. Thanks for listening. See you again soon.